Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another Lorcana video. And today is February 23rd, which means it's the release day for the new set, set number three, Into the Inklands of Disney Lorcana. Uh, I'm going to start with this playmat that I bought. This is a Disney Lorcana playmat of Stitch, clearly. Spoiler for what image uh, will be on it. Um, and I decided to buy a playmat because I was using a Pokemon playmat. I gave that away actually. Wow, I should have gotten a knife. Oh, there we go. Uh, a Pokemon playmat, uh, which I gave away. And then I used a card market standard playmat, which looks like, uh, well, you may have seen it on the channel as well. It looked like basically grass. And then I thought, I like Stitch. Why not buy this gorgeous very rolled up jeez let's uh let's zoom there well all right doesn't matter we'll uh, we'll we'll stay on this side for a bit this gorgeous play mat uh that i do hope will level out a bit um i'm going to put my box of uh sleeves on it for now to keep it from rolling back up i guess um so this is stitch this is the play mat but we're not here for that. We are here for something we've never opened on this channel. This is a Illumineer's Trove. An Illumineer's Trove comes with eight packs. There's a lot of uh, artwork. Oh, that's just numbers. Artwork everywhere, I guess. So here we have Minnie Mouse, we have Scrooge McDuck, we have Peter Pan, we have Moana, Tinkerbell, and Pongo. And then on the back side, it tells you what's inside it. So like I said, there's eight packs inside. Eight booster packs. This is why I bought it. I'm going to admit it. I wanted these dividers. There is eight of them inside. Six. Six. One for every color. Not sure why I would say eight. Six of them inside. There are six die in there as well. That uh, There's dice you can use as, uh, you know, damage markers or whatever. Really nice. And a lore counter, which is also really cool. Normally lore counters you win as a part of the OP kit, the... Uh, organized play kit but now one comes in this box as well and there is still one in the organized play kit for this set as well uh, but hey we have this one and it looks slightly different so here's a huge lore logo or Lorcana logo so it comes in this box the trove comes in this box this is now an empty box so we will put that away and here is our trove and I'm kind of excited to open this not gonna lie so we have Piglet Jafar stitch on the cover here we have uh, this is mermaid something this is one of the locations which is a really cool new addition here's another location are all locations on the side well are there all locations on the side not all locations are on the side so this set has a new car type which is called location it's things like well, well, we'll see them. We'll see them. But uh, think of uh, some mermaid lagoon. Think of uh, some evil castle. Think of a, a ship or Motunui, I'm guessing. Anyway, that's new for this set. Let's get into it. This is our first opening of any product of Into the Inklands, the new Disney Lorcana set. Let's set. So this is the inside of the trove. So the trove comes with two carton card box dividers. Here are the eight packs. Let's get those out. Oh, there's something in between them. So these are our eight packs with the design that we saw on top as well. Those packs we'll put there. That we will be opening. Those we will be opening for sure. Then we have our dividers. Cool. Oh, it's a big... Wow, this is way bigger than the... I think it's bigger than the, the promo lore counters you get. And here you can just slide through all the lore you can score and after 20 it go back to zero. There you go. That is a really good looking lore counter. I'm really happy with that. Let's put that over there. Here's a sweet little bag with our die. Like that as well. Let's put those, well, also somewhere over there. And then we have an empty box in which you can put your cards, which is nice, nice to have. Oh, wow, I didn't even check this one. Look at this. 
Whoa, that's really cool. So this is Stitch. This is one of the original characters for Lorcana, not on a card yet. I think it is. Oh, I hope I didn't offend anyone. And this is Kida. Kida is a new character for this set. Uh, obviously not a new character to Disney, but a new character for this set. Didn't have a card before. I'm going to close the box. So I'm actually going to put these things inside, close the box, put that away. But I am going to open up these dividers. The main reason for buying this box. Well, the eight packs are very nice as well. Whoa, I did, you know, wobble. <laughs> uh, the camera there a bit. So this is the Ember Divider. Amethyst. Emerald. Ruby. It's really cool. Sapphire. And Steel. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm putting them out like that because, well, we are going to open up some, uh, some packs. So why not divide them Haha, <laughs> right away as well? Let's see how our designs are sorted. So we only have two of the Jafar designs. So you know what? We're going to do it like this. Mix them up. There is no guarantees. So these are just eight random packs that you could also get randomly from any booster box. Um, no guarantees or anything. Uh, something that did change with this set. So that's our first pack open. Did change with this set is no puzzle piece. Oh. Because, well, like I said, they're introducing a new type of card, locations. So they have to explain the rules for how locations work. And those are rules number A, 1A and 1B. This is 2A. I'll hold that better. 2B. There you go. Um, those we will put to the side. I'm kind of sad that there isn't a, a puzzle piece anymore, but hey, uh, what you're gonna do, right? So, first pack. I have sleeves here. I'm going to sleeve after I've shown the cards. Uh, this is Common Moana Undeterred Voyager, which is an evasive ruby card. Cubby, the Mighty Lost Boy, for Emerald. Diablo, the Faithful Pet, for Amethyst. Here's Pluto, our first Pluto card. For Sapphire. And here is Kida. We just mentioned her. So this is Kida, a bodyguard. She's basically Simba, only then in steel. So she's moving to steel. And our final card for the commons is going to be Boss's Orders, our common for Ember. Then we get an uncommon Ember card. Wendy Darling, Talented Sailor. Prince John. Woo, let's do that correctly. Prince John. Phony King for Emerald. And our final uncommon is Magicka the Spell from DuckTales. Uh, Thieving Sorceress, an uncommon amethyst. Our first rare is going to be a rare of Audrey Ramirez. Audrey Ramirez, rare. Our second rare is also a rare for uh, Audrey Ramirez for Sapphire. This one is for Amethyst. Treasure Garden. Guardian, Protector of the Cave, can only challenge or quest if he's at a location. We haven't seen locations yet, so hoping that we get some. Here comes a rare foil of Ursula the Sea Witch. And this is one of those cards I'm going to sleeve up right away. And also not put in the stack, so the foil will go there. Ursula the Sea Witch for Amethyst, a rare foil. Uh, and not the Ursula everyone will be talking about from this set. There is a green Ursula that is looking to be very popular because she's a singer. Those are the two rule cards again. Let's put the stack back. Here we go. Pack number two, Webby Vanderquack, Milo Thatch. One of the many, many brooms in this set. There's three magic brooms in this set. This is the Big Sweeper with five willpower or defense, really good. Here is, uh, hey, there's Audrey again, only this time as a repair card. Here is Mickey Mouse, the stalwart explorer. And here is our first, here is our first location. It's Neverland Mermaid Lagoon. We saw that on the side. 
so this is a location. It's a card that has its in cost this way. So uh, in portrait mode, but in landscape mode, you get the artwork as it should be. Really nice, never land. Um, one ink to move to for defense of the uh, island itself. And this one scores one lore every round it is in play during your start, uh, during the start of your turn. So that's really cool. Robin's bow is our first uncommon from this pack. And our second uncommon is slightly another lost boy. Our final uncommon is going to be Scrooge's top hat. Also really nice. Our first rare is a rare. It's Moana, born leader. Born leader Moana, quest for two. Our second rare is another rare. And it's Stitch, Covert Agent. It's a Stitch from the pack designs, or sorry, from the top of the box. Not from the pack design, from the top of the box. Um, really cool, an evasive one. And our foil is going to be common, Flotsam. And again, the foil we will sleeve up right away. One sleeve is really enough. So that goes in there, put it there. Third pack. I like starting with a trove like this because uh, the first video always takes a little bit more time, right? Than breaking a whole box or well, than when you have broken a couple of boxes already. So those are the explanation cards. Hey, there's our playmat stitch, little rocket, Don Carnage. Here's our second uh, location card, Maleficent's Castle, Forbidden Mountain. So this one costs two to play, one to move to, and it has six willpower. Uh, scores one lore every turn. It's in play at the start of your turn. Rufus, Orphanage Cat. And Baboom. Deal two damage to chosen character or location. So this is an upgrade on Fire the Cannons. And our final common is going to be Joshua Sweet, the Doctor. It calls me an action song for Amethyst. Here is Nani, Lilo's sister, protective sister. Little John, Robin's pal. Our first rare is again a rare. This is Hades, hot-headed ruler. Ready your Titan character. So there is Titans in this set. And our second rare is also a rare. It's Simba, scrappy cub. Our final card is going to be a super rare Foil, let's just reveal it, of Tinkerbell, the very clever fairy. Again, we will sleeve this right away. Super rare foil, really nice. Let's put that there and go on to pack number four. So uh, no, well, one super hair, super hair, yes. Super rare uh, hit there. Um, no normal non-foil super rares yet or higher uh, but so far well we're only four packs in or actually this is our fourth pack jim hawkins thrill seeker jetsam the riff raff which couples well with that foil flotsam riff raff magic carpet flying rug and here is louis so yes all three nephews will be in this set louis the chill nephew quest for two in sapphire Minnie Mouse, the funky spelunker. We also saw her on a lot of the design of this set, uh, including, in this case, the pack design. Uh, she goes into the steel stack. Uh, Mr. Snoops, the inept businessman. My stacks are already sliding everywhere. Our first uncommon is Wildcat, the mechanic, who is evasive as well. That's nice. Lost ditch effort with Maui there on the card. I'm coming for Amethyst. And I've got a dream, a song for Ruby. Our first rare is going to be a rare. How do I know? Because there's nothing higher as a location and this is definitely a location. So we're getting the rare location of Brightlands, Bright Rock. There you go. This costs two to play, two to move to. Willpower or defense of seven, but characters there Get plus two defense. If you have a prince or king character, you pay one ink less to play characters. 
which is amazing. That's really good. Uh, also, scores one lore in your at the start of your turn if it is in play still. Our second rare is a super rare. Oh yeah, there we go. Prince Eric, expert helmsman. Quest for two. Surprise maneuver when this character is banished, you may banish chosen character. Very cool. And we are getting a foil location. That is also pretty cool. Let's put the Prince Eric there. So this is a foil location, a location we didn't see yet. This is an uncommon location for Emerald, Cusco's Palace, home of the Emperor. Whenever a character is challenged and banished while here, banish the challenging character. So this costs free to play, free to move to, has a defense of seven, which is really good, and scores one lore every time it's in play still at the start of your turn. I'm really, really wondering what locations will do to uh, the meta. Um, so far, we've seen some fun things. Uh, um, I will talk about it if we get to those locations. Kakamura! Sir His, Iago, pretty poly, uh, Maid Marion, Gizmo Suit, and Quick Patch, which is something that, you know, is one of the rare things I think that heals a location. So any healing card that mentions specifically heals a character does not work on locations, uh, which I think is really nice. Um, and here is another. <laughs> so quick patch, remove up to three damage from chosen location. And that is an action. This is an item that you play. Exert to remove two damage from a chosen location. So this is an uncommon, which sounds worse maybe if you don't know the game, but this remains in play. So you exert it next turn, you can exert it again. So this can heal to every turn. Kit Cloud Kicker. Very cute character. I love still love still tail spin. I uh, I should rewatch that. Um, the navigator. I'm going through it a little bit faster as you've noticed, but uh, that's because we don't want these videos to last an hour for only eight packs, right? Here is Mr. Smee, and our first rare underneath is going to be a rare, and it is one of those titans we mentioned before when we saw Hades. This is Pyrus, the Lava Titan. Our second rare is a super rare. Of Wendy Darling, the authority on Peter Pan. Really cool. Our final card is a common foil for Chief Dewey, proud of Motunui. Motunui, Motunui. Um, our first steel foil. Three more packs to go. Wow, we're really taking it slow today. So that's the that's the cards here we go billy bones keeper of the map skippy the energetic rabbit pua pot belly buddy vault door so this is an item that is very ducktales related as well really cool uh, helga sinclair and patch one of the 101 dalmatians one of the 99 puppies uh, there's not 99 puppies in this, but they did do something fun, and I hope we will see it later on. Here is an uncommon rock titan. So our second titan now. This is Lithos or Lithos. Here's one of the many forms of Maui, Soaring Demigod. Really cool. Our last uncommon is Dewey, another one of the nephews. So I think we've only not seen Yui now. Here's our first rare. Gyro Gearloos or Willy Wortel if you're Dutch. The Gadget Witch. Wit, whiz. Gadget Whiz. And our second rare is another super rare. Oh, and this one is good. This one is good. I love Sheriff of Nottingham. I'll, I'll get back to that card. Here is Distract, our foil, which is going to get sleeved right away. This track, chosen character, gets minus two strength this turn. So, Sheriff of Nottingham, let's look at that. Whenever you discard a card, you may deal one damage to chosen opposing character. Obviously, characters with resist cannot be chosen. Ward cannot be chosen. But any character your opponent has can get one damage every time you discard a card. 
So that's really cool. It's even more cool with one of the locations that is in here. Um, and then there was a card, Beast Relentless, in the previous set in green, which readies every time you damage a character. So you damage, you discard a card, you damage a car, an opponent's character with this one, you ready your beast, the beast quest for two lore. Then, if you're at the wrong, at the right location, uh, I'm gonna pause you because there's someone at the door. All right, I'm back. Um, uh, if you're at the right location, which is called the bayou, the bayou lets you, every time a character at that location quests, you get to draw and then discard a card. So if you have beast at the bayou, he quests, you draw and discard that card, and you have Sheriff of Nottingham out, you hurt a character, you damage a character, beast readies, does that again, quests for another two. If you can do that nine times, you've won the game. It's insane. Um, it's probably not as easy to set up, and probably as soon as you play the Bayou, people know what you're doing and try to, you know, destroy that location. But still, that's insane. Um, Zazu, Steward of the Pride Lands. Lena Saberwing, rebellious teenager. So that's another DuckTales character uh, in there. Here's another distract, but this time it's not the foil. Here's Gramatala. Whoa, wait, what? Did we just get two common Sapphire cards in a row? I've never had this. I've never had two cards of the same color in a pack. That is insane. Here's Nottingham. Prince John's Castle, so another location costs two, move to it costs one, and for it has six defense and it scores one lore. So what color didn't get a common? Uh, Ruby, Ruby got, right there, yeah. Wow, okay, so here's another Kita card with Atlantean text, which is really fun. Let's put that there. Here is another Kit Cloud Kicker, a different one. I love these uh, designs. I love these bears. It's it's amazing. Um, here is Ruby getting triggered. Not so sharp suitor. And Flint Heart Glomgold for Sapphire. Our first rare is a rare of Rafiki, the mystical fighter. And our second rare is another rare. Oh, and this is a good one, I think. This is Bernard, brand new agent. I'll check it out. At the end of your turn, if this character is exerted, you may ready another chosen character of yours. It's at the end of your turn, but what it does is exerted characters can be attacked. Non-exerted or readied characters cannot be attacked. So this one, if he's exerted, you can ready something else that can then not be attacked by your opponents unless they have some special uh, way to attack. Our final card is going to be a common, oh, a common foil. And this one is what I mentioned before. There is not 99 puppies in this set, but this is Dalmatian puppy Tillwagger. You may have up to 99 copies of Dalmatian puppy Tillwagger in your deck. So that's really fun. Also, if you look at the numbering on this one, this is numbered 4C. There are five different designs of this card in this set. I really, really like that. The final pack, I'm moving it because now we have a foil for Amber. I really like that. So there's five different designs for that Dalmatian puppy in this uh, set. And you can have 99, I don't know why you would put 99 copies of him in your deck, but it's fun that you're allowed. Uh, so those are, again, the new rules. Here we go, final pack. Can we get some last pack magic? Neverland hero, Peter Pan. The Ville Manor, another location. Uh, let's put that there. Bestow a gift. And another location, McDuck Manor. So this one is interesting. It costs a lot to play for. It costs only one to move to. It scores two lore every turn at the start of your turn. It's in play. And it has nine, nine defense power, willpower. 
which means it's not that easy to take out. I, that's an amazing one if you can get it out and you're willing to spend the four ink on it. It's in Sapphire though. Sapphire has a lot of ways to get a lot more ink than other colors. Here's Razul, the palace guard. And heal what has been hurt, a Rapunzel card. Our first uncommon of this final pack is Hey Hey, our third Hey Hey, uh, and this one, each, once per turn, when this character moves to a location, each opponent loses one lore. So this is a really cool card for multiplayer as well. Just keep it moving it around. Don't have to exert it or nothing. And just steal that lore from your, well, steal. Remove that lore from your opponents. Here's a song, How Far I'll Go. This is the other playset design, by the way. Look at the two top cards of your deck. Put one into your hand. Well, let's... Move on, here is Thaddeus E. Clang, the metallic leader. And then we go into our rares. Yes, our first rare is a rare, it's Starlight Vile. And our second rare is a legendary, you know what we do then. We flip it over, we first reveal. Oh, nice. Very nice, our Stitch Foil. So this is our playmat in foil form. That's really cool. And also means that we got at least one foil for every color in these eight packs. So that was Starlight Vile. Woo, and I dropped it and spoiled it there. Well, here we go. <laughs> this is our first legendary Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood. A shift free Robin Hood card. Really cool. So all in all, I really like, I'm going to sleeve this one up right away as well, but in a different kind of sleeve, because this is going into my playset, every card here, because we don't have that many yet. This is all we have going into my playset. Uh, I really like these troves. I really like the, the lore counter look gorgeous. I love these dividers. The dividers look amazing. Uh, quality is, I guess, comparable to the one you would get from Pokemon. Uh, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to this set. I got a bit tired of uh, Rise of the Floodborne, to be honest. I am really looking forward to playing with this set. Anyway, so that's the first break. It's a long video. I'm sorry for that. I will see you on the next video that will be, well, probably as long, but hopefully we'll open more on it because we are going into our first booster box next. See ya.